Hi again then guys and welcome to another circuit tune for of course one of the new cars from the 1.28 update yet again this time the Viper SRT10 now you could use the Viper for a wide variety of things you could use it as a top speed car a drag car potentially a blue moon bay car if you wanted to although it's not entirely necessary but what I've opted to do is make it into a track car, which isn't an obvious thing to do with the Viper. It's a big car, huge engine, huge power, huge torque. But of course, the ACR is a perfect example of what the Viper is capable of, basically, and in the racing world, the GTSRs do as well, the Team Orica in particular. Now, as far as this tune, the reason why I've opted to keep it in N500 is because in the case of something like a Viper, or a muscle car, for instance, a classic or modern one, is the power tends to take care of itself. And this is something that I've said for a long time on the channel when it comes to tuning. If you focus on the handling, then the straight line speed, nine times out of ten with a muscle car or with a big American sports car like this one, it will just take care of itself. So we focused in on the handling and then see how quick it can be. Now, of course, later on in the vid, I'll show you how quick it is around our test course of choice, Dragon Trail. And as far as the tuning goes, of course, balance and performance can change things anyway. So this is for if you can upgrade the power and weight. As far as the weight, I would, of course, recommend dropping it. It really helps in a heavier vehicle like this. As far as power, we've increased it a little bit just to the cusp of N500, and incidentally, you can tune it up more if you want to. It can go up close to a 1,000 brake horsepower anyway. As far as traction control, of course a car like this will depend on you as the driver if you want it on or not. I'd recommend having it off, but as I said, it's down to you. We've got it on sports soft tyres, of course, it's a road car to prove what it can do. As far as the suspension, I've got the ride height 10 mil or no, 5mm, I should say, different between the front and the rear. It's 5mm lower than stock. So 100 on the front, 105 on the back. Then as far as the frequency, we've got that on 2.3, so quite a lot higher than stock. Anti-roll on 6. Then for the compression on the dampers, we've got 65 with 90 on the rebound. I have given this one a little bit of camber, but that's actually not necessarily to keep under control. It makes it a little bit more nimble. And in the case of a very heavy handling car, that can help a lot. So in the case of this one, it definitely does. As far as the toe, that's of course neutral as usual. Downforce you can't adjust. As far as the diff, you can completely change the characteristics of this car to make it into a drifter or have better handling. Depending on what you choose, I've opted for, as you can see, the lowest settings for both initial torque and braking, and then the highest setting for acceleration. That works well for me, but of course, feel free to try other things as well. Then finally for the gearbox, as I always say, if you do change the power, you'll want to change the gears as well. But if you do keep it around the 5 to, say, 550, 600 horsepower region even, you can pretty much keep these settings. Now, as far as the auto setting, we've got 199, then individual gears of 2.55, 1.8, 1350, 1075, 0.9, 0.8, and then I've opted for a final drive of 31.75. Across the board, that's good enough for this kind of power level. You can get it up around 160 or so, I think it is, in 5th gear. Then 6th gear is just for tracks like Le Mans or the straight on the Nordschleife if you need that extra bit of power and bit of speed. So, of course, you want to see how quick it can go, how it compares to some of my other tunes, like the Porsches, for instance. So, let's find out. So, as far as the track potential that this one has, it's a surprisingly good car. But as I've said a number of times on the channel, and doubtless will again, it shouldn't really be surprising. The Viper's made a name for itself over the years of actually being a really competitive car. In the road world, the ACR proves that again and again. It held the Laguna Seca road car lap record for a while. And in the racing world as well, it's up there with the Corvette C5Rs and the C6Rs and the Aston DBR1s in terms of GT-style competition. Now, this one... It's a car which I feel is, and we'll touch on this more later on in the review, but it's a car that I feel is better now and feels more useful now in GT Sport than it did in GT6, because in 6 it was pretty much the slowest of the Vipers, notwithstanding the race car. Now it actually feels a bit more useful as a track car in general. Now as far as the handling, you can still feel the weight, it's still a big car with a big engine, so of course it's not going to feel like a Catrum through corners, but it is fast. You're looking at around a 147 to 148 lap, 
at least for me, and of course many of you guys could take it even quicker than that. So, to give you some perspective, that's a couple of seconds quicker, roughly, than, for instance, my N400 Porsche GT3 tune from last week, a few days ago. So that's not bad. For a car that isn't typically thought of for handling and trackability, that's a pretty good lap. It's a healthy time. That's around a second or so quicker than my Ferrari 250 GTO on racing tyres. So again, pretty good compared to a race car. So if you do decide to use this build, I hope of course you have a ton of fun with it, win plenty of races with it, and it is a car that definitely prefers open tracks. So for instance, if you go to Le Mans and need an N500 car, give it a try. But you can click through on here to see all of my other tunes, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.